Have you ever tried to learn a new skill, like kicking a football, drawing, or juggling just like this? Imagine how many days, weeks, hours, and years it took to become this good at juggling. And how would you begin? And how do you progress from one stage to another to become an expert just like this? Well, stick around. We're going to answer these questions in today's video. You're going to learn the three stages of learning in skill acquisition. The three stages of learning are cognitive, associative, and autonomous. We're going to look at each of these three stages now. Before we get into it, this is a bit of a graph about how you progress from one to another. So everybody begins in the cognitive stage, no matter what the skill is or your age or experience level. This is the beginner stage, the entry level stage. Now with time and deliberate practice, deliberate is the key here, we can progress from the cognitive to the associative stage, which is the intermediate or medium stage. And then finally, again with time and practice, we move to the autonomous stage or the expert stage of skill acquisition. So let's kick things off with the cognitive stage. Now cognitive just means thinking. So very simply, when you're learning a new skill, your brain is in overdrive, thinking really, really hard and trying to figure out what the skill is actually all about and how to perform it. This is called building or creating a schema, a mental scheme or picture in your head about what the skill entails. Now when you begin any skill, most people will have lots and lots of mistakes because they haven't done the skill before and they're still learning. Therefore, we require simple external feedback. External feedback means coming from someone or something outside of us. An example would be a coach or even video analysis. And learning this skill is best if we start in closed environments to learn the skill and to practice. This means we can control the timing and the performance of the skill is not determined by outside factors. Moving on to the associative stage. Associative just means connection or connecting things or associating. This is all about connecting the dots and building that schema in our brains. We're going to need lots of practice and we're going to start making less and less mistakes as that schema builds and we become better at the skill. This is the most important the make or break stage. We require a lot of encouragement either to ourselves, positive feedback, or from an external source such as a coach. A key point here is as we practice and become better at this associative stage of learning, we will start to transition from relying on external feedback and more and more internal feedback. This just means we can start to figure things out on our own based on the feel of the skill. And we can start being introduced to more open environments, but we still need to make sure we're mastering the skill in that closed environment before we can properly go into an open environment such as a game. And finally, we have the autonomous stage. This is the expert stage. Autonomous means automatic, so there's not much thinking going on. There's less mistakes being made because the skill has been mastered or crafted through lots of deliberate practice. And now we can start to turn our attention to tactics and other things in the game, rather than focusing on the skill itself. We can therefore start relying on internal feedback to correct ourselves and improve our performance. And now we can start to be really effective in open environments, such as a game where there is a crowd, other opponents, and other things that are distracting us. So the key question, and this is really important for any test or exam coming up, is how do you know which stage of learning someone is in? There are a couple of key things that we can focus on. Number one, the frequency of mistakes. When we first start out, we make lots of mistakes. As we improve, we make less and less mistakes. Number two, the ability to fix those mistakes. Do we rely on internal or external feedback? Internal would be things like feel and sight, and we start to problem solve ourselves. And external would be still relying on things like video analysis or external coaches or teammates. And finally, the ability to perform skill in different environments. We're not talking about plains and beaches, we're talking about open or closed. So a closed environment for beginners is where they can control the timing and there's nothing or no one impacting their ability to perform the skill. Open is more game related, where we're in a position where there are things that are outside of our control we can affect the performance of the skill. So now it is quiz time to see how much you've learned. So we've got a couple of scenarios here within a sporting context. You need to decide which stage of learning Jane is in and why. So Jane's a netballer and is practicing shooting. She has a defender trying to stop her. She gives herself 10 seconds each time to score. And at the end of the day, she nets eight out of 10 shots. Which stage of learning is Jane in and why? Pause the video, have a think, write your answer down. Good luck. 
So Jane would be in the autonomous stage of learning. Why? Because she is practicing in an open environment. We know that because there's a defender there. And she also gives herself a time limit, which restricts her ability to determine the timing of the skill. And she performs the skill effectively with only a few mistakes. Eight out of 10 shots going in. Did you get that right? If not, correct your answer. Scenario number two, Ryan is practicing his baseball pitching away from the main team. He's with his coach, who is showing him how to do the skill and breaking it down into three simple steps. Ryan tries and hits the target two out of five times. Which stage of learning is Ryan in and why? Pause the video, write down your answer. Ryan would be in the cognitive stage of learning. Why? Because he is practicing in a closed environment away from the main team. He is receiving external feedback from his coach and he's making frequent mistakes, only hitting the target two out of five times. Did you get that right? If not, correct your answer. Next we have Brad. Brad is practicing juggling three balls. He spends hours by himself getting used to the movement and pattern and he's beginning to get a feel for when he's performing the skill correctly. They're still making some mistakes. So, which stage of learning is Brad in and why? Brad would be in the associative stage of learning, the middle one, because he is a schemer of the skill, so he knows how to do it in his mind, and he is transitioning from external to internal feedback. We know that because it says he's starting to get a feel for when he's performing the skill correctly. How did you go? Did you get that right? And lucky last, we have John. John is at a basketball training as instructing his teammates where to run in various plays. Which stage of learning is John in and why? John would be in the autonomous stage of learning because he's focusing on tactics and external factors rather than on his own skill, indicating that he has mastered the skill and is able to shift his focus during the training. All right, and a quick summary of what you've learned so far in the three stages of learning. The first stage is the cognitive or beginner stage. This is when we're learning the schema or the mental picture of how the skill actually works. High mistake ratio, and we require external feedback from coaches or other people around us to help us improve. With time and deliberate practice, we can progress to the associative or the intermediate stage. We are still developing the schema, we're doing a lot of practicing and we're making some mistakes, but not as much as the cognitive stage. And with time and deliberate practice, we can progress to the third and final stage, the autonomous or expert stage. We still make mistakes, but not as much as the previous two. We can focus externally, Rather than only on the skill, we can look at the things around us, such as tactics and strategies and opposition positioning. And we are using internal feedback, the feel, sound, and sight of the skill. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Stay tuned for the next video.